where river, lake and mountain meet, stands a school that is synonymous with traditions, sports and exemplary gentlemen. Trinity College Candy has a past that extends even beyond 150 years. The school we know today had its humble beginnings during the colonial rule in Kandy, a city at the heart of Ceylon of old. The earliest beginnings of Trinity run back to 1818, where a mission house was established on Trinity Hill bordering the Udavatta Kale to educate Kandyans of the ways of Christianity and knowledge of Western arts. The site where the mission house stands later evolved to host a church in 1855, erected by Reverend William Oakley who proclaimed it the Holy Trinity Church. However, due to Reverend Oakley's devotion to the church, it was more commonly known as the Oakley's Church. Appeals for a school of higher education were high in Kandy, vesting the responsibility on Reverend Island Jones, who in 1857 established the Kandy Collegiate School on Trinity Hill. Regarded as the founding father of Trinity, Reverend Island Jones retired himself from school duties few years later, keener on pursuing his evangelist mission. With his retirement, the Candy Collegiate School closed down six years later in 1863. Trinity dates his existence from the arrival of Reverend Richard Collins in 1872 to reopen the Candy Collegiate School on the 17th of January. A Master of Arts of St. John's College, Cambridge, he was perhaps the first man to envision and work towards what Trinity will be in the future. I think the recipe for leadership at Trinity College is uh, founded in its pioneering vision. As you know, Trinity is built upon three perennial Christian values the value of service, value of love, and value of charity, respect of human differences. In 1873, the first official college crest was designed by the principal, Reverend Collins himself, and it represented a lion couchant for the Singhala people with the Adam's Peak in the background. The rising sun was meant to signify welcome to the Orientals. The college crest would be further changed in 1878 this time to include a palmyra tree to represent the Japanese community of Sri Lanka. This addition was intended to signify the unity of countrymen at Trinity. Trinity is unique in the sense, uh, today we in, in the society we have so many issues and challenges. And one of the biggest is the uh, ethnic and religious uh, relationships. Uh, in Trinity you make so many friends. I'm a Buddhist, I got used to Christianity, the chapel is here. Uh, then you have uh, Muslim friends, then you have the Tamil friends. College is unique in the sense you have so many friends, you make so many friends and you meet with them and you make friends with them for life. Trinity is a habitat of learning where everyone is welcomed. We do not segregate people uh, with uh, measures that we find in the world today. So inclusivity is the hallmark of Trinity College. The Candy College School Improvement Society, probably one of the oldest literary associations in the island, came into existence on the 19th of March. Later, the association was renamed as the Trinity College Literary Association, shortly known as the TCLA, and built an environment where freedom of expression, thought and speech were fostered and improved upon. The first ever inter-school debate in Ceylon was organized by the association in 1912 between Trinity and St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. In 1976, the long-running Candy Collegiate School transformed as the Church Missionary Society decided to rename the school Trinity College Candy at the appeal of the founding principal. The years leading up to 1904 saw the school standards deteriorate, especially in the area of discipline. All of this changed and improved miles beyond thanks to the leadership of one man. 
Reverend Alexander Gardner Fraser was the son of the Lieutenant Governor of Bengal, India, and he was a distinguished scholar educated at Trinity College, Oxford. He was only 26 when he took up the reins of transforming a small school in the hills of Kandy to one of the leading colleges in the country. The Fraser era stands out because Reverend Fraser really established the school, a little school in the city of Kandy. He developed it into one of the leading schools in the island. And during his time period, school academic results, then the sports and extracurricular activities, the discipline of the school and the infrastructure development increased and developed leaps and bounds. Rugby was introduced to college during the years of Fraser in 1906. The first inter-school match ever played in the island was played between Kinswood College Candy and Trinity. Rugby went on to be a defining part of Trinity and later produced one of the most anticipated college fixtures in the sport in the form of Bradby, an annual two-leg match played with Royal College Colombo since 1945. In a prize-giving address in 1908, Fraser made his vision for Trinity abundantly clear. Under a colonial tutelage where the study of vernaculars was discouraged by the government, Fraser made a point that a college fails if it is not producing true citizens and men and are isolated from the masses of their own people by ignorance of their language. In 1912, the present college crest was designed by Mr. L.J. Gaster, the vice principal at the time. The college crest was meant to represent the Sri Lankan heritage in the lion and the Holy Trinity enclosed in a field of blue to represent the school's Christian heritage. The school colors were officially maroon, gold and navy blue. The college crest was hardly the only gift given to the school by the legendary architect and designer Mr. L.J. Gaster, who went on to gift his penultimate design to create a wonder for Trinity. During the semi-centennial celebration in 1922, the foundation stone was laid for a building for eternity. Ten years earlier, Fraser had put forward a notion to build a new church driven by the inadequacies of the Oakley's church, which he described as the dirtiest and meanest of buildings in the compound. The unique design for the iconic chapel that sits on top of Trinity Hill today was designed by the most remarkable Mr. Gaster, Vice Principal of College, who was also an architect and draftsman with a remarkable intuition. In a speech delivered by Mr. Gaster, he admitted that his trips to Polo Narua had inspired him to create a masterpiece akin to the wondrous structures built by the kings of old. Treading among the ruins of Polo Narua and looking over the vastness of the Parakrama Samudra, Mr. Gaster envisioned a structure for posterity that will stand the test of time and be a monument to the persistence, creativity and tenacity of our ancestors. A complete design built almost all in stone and resting on pillars made out of single-file rocks was unveiled to the staff who were unanimous in taking on the Himalayan task. During that time, knowledge and expertise to construct a building of that style and complexity had been lost in time. The manner in which it was to be constructed had to be improvised and Reverend Fraser made a head-turning decision to conduct the construction of the chapel completely in-house with consultation from outside. The pillar blocks, 18 feet long and 3 feet square, were sourced from a stone quarry in Arupala and brought to college on a special trolley which had to be pushed by two elephants from either end. The three-ton stone pillars were expensive and difficult, limiting transport to only two stone pillars per month. The 54 stone pillars now seen in the chapel were brought and placed there over the years, rendering a slow but steady construction. In 1935, the college chapel was ceremoniously dedicated to God, although only the side chapel had been completed. Mr. Gaster, the pioneer behind the marvel, sadly did not witness this ceremony nor the chapel in its full splendor, as he left Ceylon in 1934, leaving construction in capable hands. The long-standing Oakley's church was finally demolished in 1939 and one of its only remnants stand today at the entrance of the college archives. 
The murals at the chapel are unique to Sri Lanka. Painted by a revered old boy and celebrity artist David Painter, the murals were revolutionary and retaliatory to Western forms of the depiction of Christ. The murals at the Trinity College Chapel depicts Jesus Christ as a Sri Lankan man with brown skin and short hair, making him more relatable to Sri Lankans at a time when Western supremacy and values overruled the country. The boldness of David Painter and the agreement of the college staff to his radical vision is proof to the freedoms and visionary patronage provided by the school. The Trinity College Chapel was finally completed in 1969 when the long overdue bell tower was finished. The construction that took nearly 50 years to complete was a testament to the adventurous and tenacious nature of Trinity. Although the master architect of the Trinity College Chapel, Mr. L.J. Gaster, did not live to see its end, his son visited college in later years on pilgrimage to see what his father described as his life's work. Farming is a unique quality in Trinity that was introduced during the times of Fraser. The first mention of a farm is one established in the college premises around 1908, when Fraser insisted that a Trinitian should know how to till the good earth to earn the food he eats. In 1925, John MacLeod Campbell laboured and got hold of a plot of land in Bahiravakanda with more space and freedom to expand and cultivate. So anyway, this started after starting agriculture as a subject in 1908. That is the time uh, Reverend Fraser, uh, and he's the one who introduced this agriculture as a subject. Because Sri Lanka is an agricultural country, so the country nourished by, you know, crop husbandry and animal and fisheries. So by looking at that, uh, he started agriculture as a subject and entire school premises was uh, full of vegetable plots and few poultry. The farm was later shifted to Haragama under the need to expand and flourished under the guidance of the brilliant Mr. W. A. V. Sinathambi. And this time the farm manager was uh, you know, uh, W.A.V. Uh, Mr. Sina Thambi, and uh, he's a graduate from Oxford University, specialised in botany. He was the botany teacher in uh, Trinity College. In 1966, the new farm in Palle Kale was formed on a land undisputed by claims and solely owned by the college in contrast to the previous farm sites. I think uh, pr uh, Mr. Sina Thambi, the farm manager, so he's one of the leading farm managers in Sri Lanka because this is the time that uh, in Trinity College uh, farm made a record by cultivating sorghum. And this time we have uh, rubber, plant, rubber nursery as well as tea nursery. So this is the point that uh, this Trinity farm has been little bit deviated uh, into a plantation sector as well. But anyway, the interest towards the agriculture and interest towards the dealing with nature, editing nature, that experience, the first-hand experience they obtained from uh, farm. The idea of students getting their hands dirty, working the soil and handling animals is one that comes with Trinity throughout the ages. For it is in the vision of Trinity to create men who are of this earth, skilled as a worker in the fields and distinguished as professionals of the highest calibre. Trinity College Candy celebrated its centenary celebrations under Principal Lionel Fernando on the 17th of January and continued throughout the year in grand style. Yeah, I'm actually very fortunate that I was a student when Trinity celebrated the centenary year. Uh, now I'm the president of the OBA when Trinity celebrates 150 years. The change between the, the 50 years is enormous. The following years were especially difficult for Trinity, as the country was engulfed in conflict due to the insurgencies in 1971 and 1989 and the shameful Black July riots in 1983. In 1971, we had a whole group of uh, burger friends who left Sri Lanka in 71 after the insurgency. It is mentioned in the books of history that Principal Dr. W. G. Vikramasinghe bravely refused mobs who broke into the school, demanding the youth to join them in the fight. And in 83, after the ethnic uh, turmoil, uh, we had so many Tamil friends, Tamil brothers, who left us. So those two years, 71 and 83, was one of the most sorrowful years for 
all Trentians because we actually in 83 we were able to keep our Tamil families together, we as Sinhalese as Trinitians, but unfortunately they were so frightened that they left. Dr. W. J. Vikram Singha is also revered for many more contributions to college throughout his years. Considered by many as someone as visionary and driven as Fraser, during his time he changed the face of Trinity, adding many amenities to college, including the swimming pool and the Palikale farming school. 1982 marks a historic day for Trinity as the Asgiri Cricket Grounds constructed for college in 1915 by Fraser achieved the status of an international cricket stadium. The following year, the first international test match between Sri Lanka and Australia was played at the grounds. In 1988, the troubles of the country worsened and Dr. W. G. Vikram Singh retired and for the first time in many years, the school shut down for a prolonged period of time. During the 90s, the civil war had reached its height and many Trinitians answered the call to protect their motherland. Some of them even paid the ultimate price at the war front for the country. Most notably, Lieutenant General Denzel Kobek Hadoua sacrificed himself at one of the most hated battles in the northern war front, following a distinguished career in the army. 31st October 1993 will always be remembered as a red letter day. The entire school walked to Palle Calais for the opening of the new rugby and football field. Many critiqued the establishment of a rugby field nine miles away from the school, and Trinitians, true to their tenacity, wanted to prove a point that it was a mere walking distance. We focus on the all round development of a student. So, while imparting uh, the formal education in the classrooms, sports in particular provide uh, the opportunity for children to develop their interpersonal relationships and also they learn to face challenges, conflict management, uh, they learn to manage conflict and also they develop very strong friendship in the, in the sporting field. So, uh, especially when we meet old boys, even after 30, 40 years at school, I mean, having left school, they, they are very close to each other. So, I think uh, there is something special in Trinity that is, the school friendship lasts longer. So, they value the friendship at school and all of them, uh, you know, take shape uh, uh, both in the classroom and in, of the classroom in the playing field. 1997 saw the modern phase of college being created with the addition of new buildings and improved facilities under the stewardship of Principal Leonard Dialvis. Then also I believe uh, another turning point is when Trinity College decided to remain a private school in the national system of education because that has given Trinity an opportunity to try out new models in education. 2019 marked a moment envisioned by the forefathers of Trinity many decades ago. Trinity was officially ranked number one in the list of most respected schools in Sri Lanka by Education World Global School Rankings. However, the following year for Trinity was another dark chapter with the advent of the COVID-19 virus forcing Trinity to shut down and halt in school activities completely. COVID-19, in fact, sort of gave us a formidable challenge. We were initially shocked and we had to shut down all, all of a sudden. But then thanks to the support and the willingness of our parents and the teachers, we quickly jumped into online education. And uh, when we started, of course, none of us were experts in that. But there were early adopters among the staff who sort of gave leadership to the others so everybody learned uh, the know-how while doing the job. So that was the beauty of our members of staff. They were willing to learn. That's the most difficult era uh, the country has faced in our history, actually. 71 insurgency, we didn't have this kind of uh, pressure on the students and the schools. 2020, we had 126 days. And uh, in 2021, we had only 66 days of school. Uh, so I think although we were deprived of 
especially the rugby. I am a rugby player personally. So rugby is one of the most prestigious games that that is happening currently, and that being disrupted is kind of sad, and it's kind of a it's uh, it's kind of disappointing. Among the many qualities that we look in a Trinitarian, I think the most important is the quality of adaptability. It will always be adaptability and a very strong sense of resilience. It also gave an opportunity to uh, develop our skills and also to realize our limitations. So the moment we were able to realize our limitations, we were open to learning. And that gave us the impetus to go forward. And I think now, uh, we have been one of the schools in Sri Lanka who have been running a very successful online education. I believe that th although they were disrupted, we can, we, we should, we should uh, pick up the pace and we should get those things back on track because I believe I can do it together with my school officer skill and together with the entire school community. Uh, so I believe that we can start from where we stop. The sesquicentennial celebration, the T150 celebration, uh, is multifaceted. Our former principal, Mr. Fowler Watt, had a vision of developing the infrastructure uh, aspect of the school. So we have new buildings coming up. We already have uh, commissioned uh, Paul Jairaj uh, Hilaria Beratna building for advanced level, and there is the science building to come with the state of the art uh, facilities for lab and so on. So we have these uh, infrastructure facilities coming up and also we are refurbishing Napier to make it a multi-purpose uh, facility for students to engage in their learning activity and, uh, and the quadrangle is getting, the basketball court is getting renovated. So there are multiple projects uh, in, in terms of in, uh, infrastructure facility. In addition to that, we also have an aspect uh, of celebration purely meant for students. Students through their clubs and societies, they have uh, planned their projects and events throughout the year. So what we started already on the 17th of uh, January with the Founders Day celebration. This is going to be an year-long uh, sesquicentennial celebration culminating with the uh, carol service in December. Yes, the present state of the farm. Uh, again, we have uh, a blooming up period like it's, it's a good time. Now again, uh, things are turning into good side. But there was a period, you know, people deviating from agriculture related uh, subjects uh, into uh, technology based subjects like computer. But now uh, there is a trend, you know, children asking or they are coming and they like to deal with these animals and wearing, uh, wearing boots and working in the field. So that type of, uh, you know, a new era is coming up. It's going to be a very competitive arena in the next 150 years, right? Uh, students are going to be challenged on whatever they do. So they have to be 100% perfect in whatever they do and uh, whichever career they select, they have to be 100% sure of uh, what they are hoping to do. At the moment we have uh, uh, a very good facility coming up. Very soon it will be commissioned. So far we have been talking about career guidance in schools. In Sri Lanka everybody talks about it. Uh, but there is no systematic approach to career development as such. Uh, it's like whoever wants to get into a job, they, they get connected through school. We have our links, we have our old boys in various places. So Trinitians have that opportunity of getting into places. But uh, now we are focusing on developing a proper career guidance uh, department. where We are going to name it as Center for Excellence. So this Center for Excellence is going to be a new uh, addition which I think definitely going to contribute to the growth and development of our students both at school and after school. Surely there are challenges. I think with the dissemination of uh, online platforms, the ever proliferating tendencies of tuition and lack of clarity in education policy, uh, I think we are running the risk of schools becoming obsolete. But for Trinity College, it will not be the case because we are always looking at a hybrid model. 
our education model today is based on critical thinking, collaboration, creativity and above all effective communication. So we are looking at upgrading ourselves. So for Trinity it's not about being obsolete or not but it is about the impact that you make in uh, introducing new models of teaching and learning to Sri Lanka and above all to the world and to set the paradigm. I'm sure Trinity College will be relevant as it was relevant to society 100 years ago. Trinity will definitely be relevant to uh, the people of our country and the people of the world for another century to come. As Trinity steps into the modern age, challenges are abundant. The rapid changes in the school system, student lifestyle and modern technology all contribute to make the age-old student environments obsolete. However, if the past has shown anything at all, it is that persistence and adaptability will make sure that Trinity will prevail.